Hey y'all and welcome to the second episode of creating a, a video wall inside the Max using JavaScript and Jitter. So as you can see I have prepared here a little scheme, a little diagram to illustrate how the algorithm is going to work, how the different objects inside JavaScript are going to be connected together. But before we go into that let's actually just recap where we left the patch last time and add a little thing. So what we can do is that we can load a folder containing some movies inside our objects from our video player class in our function load folder. And these objects uh, are contained inside an array, which we call G video players. And every element in this array is an object from the class video player. So what we do is simply to load one of the movies from the folder inside an instance of the video player class which what it does is simply to read this uh, movie inside a movie player, uh, inside a JIT movie object, and then we got a video plane that is simply uh, basically represented as a square on our rendering window. So uh, let's now, uh, before we go any further, let's assign a random position to the video planes so that they are all not one on top of each other, but they're all in random uh, positions in our world. So let's do like this, let's assign a different value to the position attribute of the video plane. So like this, this uh, video plane dot position is equal to an array in which we put all random values. So we can get random values in JavaScript with map dot position and this will give us a number between 0 and 1. So if we multiply by 2 and subtract 1 will now be a number between minus 1 and 1. Let's do the same for the epsilon position. Uh, sorry, uh, what did I write? Math position, actually this is math uh, random. <laughs> of course, uh, I got a bit confused. And for the zeta we just assign a value of zero. So the zeta is always the same. Cool, if I now save here and I save the main file and I now uh, recreate, uh, refill the array basically with the objects, exactly we can see that uh, uh, the objects are scattered all around the place in our rendering window, so our video planes. Now let's get to our diagram and see uh, how we can actually render the videos inside those video planes. So first of all, we don't want to render them directly inside our rendering window, we want to render them inside the node um, which, will, which we will pass the texture to a GGL video plane. So this is like a, like a GUI, right? Like a graphic user interface. So imagine like in a video game, maybe you have your life um, amount or the map or some stuff like this, and this doesn't interact with the camera of the world. It's always in a fixed place. So as well, we don't want that this, uh, that this uh, video wall interacts with the camera we put in our world. We want it to be like a plane that is always fixed there, like a graphical user interface, basically. So we don't want it to be subject to the camera of the world. We want it to have its own camera and be in its own context. So we're going to render all this stuff inside a GGL node, uh, which is going to output the texture to this video plane, which is always going to be at the same place. We can, for example, attach it to the leftmost side of our window. So we will have a GGL node, which as a GGL camera with orthographic two, because we don't care about the Z axis. We only just care about uh, uh, the X and Y, so we don't want depth, and that's why we say ortho2. So this camera draws to GGL node. Um, our GGL video planes from inside our video player class, they also as well draw to the GGL node. The JIT movie outputs its texture to those GGL video plane. So the GGL video plane will have always the same aspect because they, have su they are subject to this camera from the node, which has orthographic2. And then the last GGL video plane, the master video plane, let's say, we will say transform reset one. So it's not going to move around with the camera that we place in, G in the external JIT world. Cool. So the only thing we need now still uh, is a jitter listener. So the JIT movie object basically needs to be banged inside JavaScript. It's not like uh, in normal Max when it automatically outputs the texture if we give it the attributes output texture, no. In Jitter it needs to be actually continuously banged. It needs to process the video that it has inside and then send it out as a texture. So we need a Jitter listener that is going to listen to the JIT world. And then we are done. This is going to be it. So let's try to do this in this video. All right. 
So, first thing we said we need is then a GGL node, because this is where we're going to render everything. So, actually, before we create a GGL node, I want to change this into, let's call it a draw tool. So, it's kind of going to be consistent with other GGL objects. They have a draw to attribute. So, let's change the name here of this draw tool. And so, basically, this is now a real attribute. If we click with the right mouse on the input of the GS video wall, we can see that it has an attribute, which is called draw2, and the argument is the name of our JIT world. Cool. So, let's now create the GGL node. So, let's call it simply node, and this is going to be a new jitter object. JITGL node, and it's going to draw. So, the GGL node, it's also going to draw to the main world. So it's going to draw to draw2, which is set to the name of our world. Then we can also change it uh, uh, by changing this attribute. For the moment, we are not going to change it. And we need to say to this node that it has to capture the scene. We capture one. And maybe we can say also erase color so we can separate the node from the background color. We can say, uh, for example, red. Cool. And this is our node for the moment. We don't need to modify it uh, any further for the moment. Then we need the master video plane, so we can call it like a master plane or something like that. And this is going to be a new jitter object, jit, oops, ggl video plane. And this is going to draw also to our draw to, to our main context, cool. And we are going to say that the texture that must be drawn to this master plane, so master, plane dot texture is the output texture from the node so we say node dot out name that's the name of the texture output from the node object cool as you can see it's already working and it's drawn a big fat um, square inside our window cool which is red because we gave it uh, uh, the color red to the race color of the node nice um, now we need the camera that draws inside the node and has ortho 2 so let's maybe put it here so no, um, let's call it camera node. It's equal to a new jitter object, GGL camera. And let's say camera node, it has to draw. So draw to, it's not our main context. This in, in this case is the name of the node. So node.name, this is the context to which it has to draw. And let's also say camera node.ortho equal to. So we say we don't care about the z-axis, we don't care about depth. We want to represent it with ortho2, which will also help us in, uh, when we are going to click on the videos because the mouse coordinates will be perfectly mapped to the actually window coordinates. Cool. So now what we want to do is that uh, our video player objects don't don't draw anymore to our main context, but actually to the node name. This is going to be the context to which they draw now. Cool. Um, so let's see if this is working for the video planes inside the inside the video player class, and it seems that it's working. So now they're drawing inside the, our node, which is outputting the texture to the master plane, and this is the result. Now, the problem is if that if I make this window bigger, as you can see, the proportions of the video planes are going to be completely wrong, and that's because the, the texture output from the node automatically takes the dimension of the main rendering window. So in order to avoid that, we have to say node.adapt0. So in this case, the node, it's not going to adapt, it's always going to have its default dimension. So the size of the windows are not going to change. Then if we want more resolution, we can make the default dimension of the node bigger, which we are going to do later but we fixed this problem. Cool. So now we need this listener that we talked about, this listener that we talked about before, that is going to listen to our JIT world and output uh, basically a bang and tell to the objects inside the, um, the video player's array to process the matrix they got inside and output the texture containing uh, the frame of the video. So we need this listener, which we are going to create here. This is going to be our listener, listener. So new jitter listener. And this must list, this needs a context where to listen to. So this is going to be our draw to, which is the name of the context. 
and then it needs a callback function. So a callback function is going to be called every time there is an event happening in the, our outside JIT world. So this is pretty useful. This is kind of um, this is kind of very neat because we can directly get uh, what is going on with the outside JIT world without having any direct connection to the JIT world, but simply attaching to it this JIT listener. So we need a callback function that does something every time there is a new event in the world. So let's create the callback function. So this is a function. Let's call it callback fun. Uh, it takes as argument an event. This is kind of automatically passed by the JIT listener every time there is a new event happening in the outside JIT world. For example, we can say if event dot event event name and this is a property of the event object so event is like an object that has different properties and one of those is the name of what is going on so the event that just happened uh, so if event name is equal to a draw um or event dot event name is equal to a swap so this is kind of uh, the two events that happen in uh, when the JIT world renders. It actually happens the swap event, but uh, if it will be a node, the context to which we are attaching the callback, the, the listener, then it will give us the draw event. So just to cover both possibilities, I'm saying uh, both cases. So if it's equal to draw or swap. This is basically means that the main world is rendering or a node that we attach to it is rendering. So in this place, we now have to send the kind of the bang to the JIT movie inside the, the video player class to tell them to actually render the frame, the current frame of the video they loaded. So let's do like this for var uh, player in video no, how we call our array G video players. So for every player inside this array. We're going to say G video players player. So we say, okay, this this player here inside this array, and then we can say play movie, for example, something like this. And this function doesn't exist. We have to create it inside our class. So let's go inside our video player class and let's create this function. So this uh, play movie, it's equal to function. So we assign a new property to our video player object, which is a play movie. And basically it works like this. So this movie player dot matrix calc. This is how we can play a frame of a movie inside JavaScript. Uh, matrix calc this, uh, and we have to create that dummy matrix uh, that allows the movie to kind of read the current frame. So let's actually create this dummy matrix. So this dummy mat is equal to a new jitter matrix. Uh, with four planes, type char, and we can also give it dimension one one. It doesn't really matter. That's actually an array. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter the dimension because it's anyway going to fill uh, the actual uh, dimension with the dimension of the movie it it has loaded. So this dummy mat, this dot dummy mat. So now it loaded the frame. Now we don't we need to output this uh, its texture. Uh, to the video plane inside the object. So basically, this dot video plane dot texture it's equal to this movie player dot texture name. This attribute contains the name of the texture currently loaded uh, inside the, the JIT movie object, and we are going to set the value of the texture of the video plane to that texture. Cool. I guess this should work. Let's try it out. Let's go into video world, save the main file. Let's try to load the folder again. And it's working. Amazing. Uh, there is a white thing. What's that? No idea. Okay. So now we are loading all those videos inside the different video planes inside our main, uh, inside our main video plane. So uh, that's pretty cool. I just want to show you something. If we create a GGL camera here, which draws to our main context. Oh, let's also, let's also touch a JIT FPS GUI object to check our frame rate. So if we create a GGL camera that maybe looks at the center, lock look uh, one, and maybe also tripod 
one and then we are going to connect it to a jit.anim dot drive with ui listen maybe speed 10 then let's check what happens if we connect this here all right so we can see that actually the video plane is moving which this is not what we wanted right we wanted to have it always uh, that this video plane is not uh, uh, touched by what's going on in the in the main world so in order to do that we can simply go here inside our main file and say master plane dot transform reset equal to one so if we say equal to one it's basically not going to be affected by the camera so now i'm moving around with the wasd keys and it's not affecting the the video plane we can for example then uh, rescale it also make it a bit smaller so plane dot scale for example 0 0.7 or something and now it's a bit smaller and then our objective is to kind of draw it somewhere inside our window where it doesn't disturb we can also activate it and deactivate it uh, um, and we are going to place the movies also in a grid not just in a random position so then in the end will be something that we can really use in a real world scenario cool so this is it for this video um i hope this was not too confusing the main thing to bring home i will say is the listener the callback function that basically every time the jit world sends out a bang it's going to tell the movie to render the current frame and in the video player uh, the cool thing is that we saw how we can uh, load a new frame inside the JIT movie object using the matrix calc method and a dummy matrix and then outputting the texture uh, where we want in this case to a video plane inside the, uh, our video player object. Cool. Hope this makes sense. Uh, hope this was clear. It's of course not for JavaScript complete beginners this is uh, this is clear but uh, i hope that for everybody that uh, knows a bit of javascript this is going to be interesting and is going to allow to explore a bit more of the possibilities offered by javascript in max especially with jitter so uh, thank you very much for following patch the lord uh, on my patreon and uh, see you soon in the next video ciao